Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa Atiyullah <coughs> Atiyya Rasul Wa Ulul Amri Minkum And always a reminder for myself An Abdukullah Jisu Daeefu Miskinu Zalim Al Jahan But for the grace of Allah Zawajal's Rahmah and mercy that we are still in existence and that alhamdulillah the month of Muharram and the immensity of its light and blessings and for those whom taking a path of immense love and muhabbat for the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's a gift from Allah that's nothing that can be understood by the mind whom Allah guides He has truly guided. And the events of Muharram and the hijrah of Sayyidina Muhammad And that hijrah for us every Muharram is a movement, is a pilgrimage. Is a pilgrimage from the active state of belief in which all our struggles and that's what Mecca represents that Prophet struggled 13 years in Hijaz and Mecca and that our life is about continuous struggle, continuous struggle until Allah finds satisfaction within the struggle of the servant. So it's not something that can be done quicker because Prophet lays the precedent for us as our path. Thirteen has the reality of the meme and the reality of thirteen years of struggling then Allah grant an opening for the city of lights. And this is then the reality between Medina and Mecca, Mecca and Medina. And this hijrah that for us every year leaving, leaving the bad character moving to better character, leaving evilness going towards goodness. Then again if you've left that then you're good trying to get better, good trying to get better. Each time asking, Ya Rabbi then Muharram I want to enter into a deeper reality. I want to enter into a deeper reality, a cleaner reality and that to purify my being of what we talked about from Sayyidina Adam salam, Sayyidina Nu, Sayyidina, Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Musa salam, Sayyidina Isa salam. Each of them coming to teach us that every Muharram there's a spiritual growth in which you're going to leave something and move towards a higher reality. And the event between leaving Mecca and the hijrah of Prophet going to the cave. Because this cave is the reality of our heart and the reality of entering into the Divinely heart. Because what opens after the heart is a city of lights, is paradise and your malakut reality. And Allah is giving for us its understanding that when you leave Mecca is called the… and the, it's called Haramain. That you're in a Mecca state that no more haram, this is not about doing halal and haram and halal and haram. At some point you left that haram and you're trying to take a path in which to please Allah The Meccan state and the state of the hijrahs that, Ya Rabbi I'm trying my best now to do what pleases you to reach towards your satisfaction. I beg your forgiveness and seek your satisfaction and seek your pleasure in everything that I do. Then awliya come to teach us that the cave that Prophet went to is an immense reality and that is the symbol of the prophetic heart. That our entry before the, the realm of Medina, before entering into a city of lights, before entering any state in which Allah wants to grant these believers a light, they have to know they're in the Muhammadan heart. They have to know where they are, otherwise they don't know what they're attributing that light to. 
And that's why Naqshbandiya and Naqshbandiya Tal Aliya is carrying that immense secret that Sayyidina Muhammad went into a cave with Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq And then that has the immensity of the reality of this heart and this path that this cave was blocked by the symbol of a spider web. And every year we go into that because now we're going to be going into Safar next month, next seven, eight, nine, ten days. And Safar has to do with the secret of 18 and Surat al-Kahf and that has to do with the cave. But the cave opens in Surah Tawbah 9 verse 40 when Allah describes that the two that fear not Allah was with us in the cave. Means the reality of the cave and the opening of that cave is necessary to enter into the realities of the month of Safar. And in that cave it was screened with ankabut because the disbelievers came to harm and search for Sayyidina Muhammad and what they found? Oh spider webs. That we don't see anything in there, there's spider webs, nobody's here. But each symbol Allah has for us a reality that, oh people of this cave, that they're teaching you a reality of this cave. There was a dove sitting on two eggs and they looked at dove and said, this dove is here, this spider web is here, nobody's in there because they don't see the reality. And many may pass these zawiyas, these channels and they don't see that reality nor are they meant for that reality. And those whom entered into that cave and their existence is inside that cave because awliyaullah teach that when Prophet was in that cave the atomic reality of the souls, atoms of everyone was in that reality. And that Prophet was sending that tajalli and blessings upon their atom. Just one atom from your being is enough to dress all of your reality. And that their atoms were present in that cave to receive these realities and to receive these lights and they were destined from that understanding. And so then that cave has two symbols before we can enter in. One there's a bird which represents the angelic realm and the angelic realities. What you're about to enter are angelic realities. These are not everyday understandings and the earthly realities. And two eggs because for the mulk and malakut that these realities that are about to go into that cave that you're entering that its symbolism is that there's two eggs which represent the kingdom of the heavens and the kingdom of earth. And sitting there is an angel because the birds represent the angels and awliya. That what you're about to enter in are the realities of heavens and earth. And the seal of the cave, the spider web. And why we said the spider web? Because Allah describes it as a beautific home. It's so frail but so immensely beautiful. How the spider weaves this house, no arch architectural CAD systems, no, no graphic abilities, how this spider makes this amazing home and spends his time or her time making this beautific home so that Allah will send rizq to it, send his sustenance or her sustenance to that. So it means the symbol of this cave for the khuluq and the character of people that only Allah want to stress from its understanding is that the inhabitants of this cave they don't hunt for their rizq. They don't try to conquer the earth and they become so busied and overwhelmed by the earth that they forgot about their Lord. They Forget that they have time to pray, they forget the awrah, the zikrs, the salawats. The world makes you to be busy, that's its game. 
that is what it's designed for. Anyone whom directs themselves to that will become lost. They find themselves pulled by shaitan more and more into their dunya and less and less because shaitan wants you to forget your akhila. That you don't need to do that, you don't need to pray, you don't need to go and do your zikr now. Come, come, make your money, make your career, make your station and your position. And that's the nature of the satanic kingdom on dunya. So then the spider web comes and Allah says, I want you to be like Ankabut. And Ankabut is the 29th surah. 29 is Basirat al Jalala. So we throw all these numbers, only people who are writing will understand because later they can come back and say, what was he talking about? Spider 29. Right, 29, oh when we talked in Muharram about Lamalat, the ulul bab and the caretakers of the gate, they're the custodians of 29, right? Don't they have Lamalif? Don't they have uh, Zulfiqar? Lamalif is a Zulfiqar. They hold the handle of the Zulfiqar. And the handle on lamb and alif is who? Because lahil illallah who? Muhammadun Rasulullah So Basirat al-Lam Jalala means they're holding Zulfiqar. That's why back home Zawiyahs all had Zulfiqar and all the symbols of lamb alif. So means the one whom they're guarding this cave of realities and guiding you to come inside this cave, they're warning on the outside that these are going to be now angelic realms, don't use your head. These realities of dunya and the realities of akhirah and that's why the talk from last night was iman. When the shaykhs are teaching something. Don't try to use your head to calibrate them. Oh look what he said, it didn't happen. It wasn't supposed to happen. Had it happened that wouldn't have been faith, that would have been an event. <laughs> faith is when you believe it happened. Shaykh said, Imam Mahdi is coming, well you better have boots. Says Armageddon is coming, you better have supplies in your home. It's not you're using your mind, I don't know what you're talking about Shaykh, this has never happened. No it did happen. For the one whom believed Allah opened their heart and they saw Armageddon and they see Sayyidina Mahdi And for them everything they said they believed in it, Allah opened it because Allah has no time. And these events have no time but if you're trying to live in this world of faith from your timed reality but this is a timeless reality. They're teaching you from the world of light, the world of light has no time. When you go somewhere and they say that this minaret Sayyidina Isa is descending. If you're from timeless people you sit there and you see Sayyidina Isa descending. Right? At Umayyad Masjid, he said, there's a minaret, Sayyidina Isa is descending. So as soon as you sit in the masjid you see Sayyidina Isa because he's always ascending and descending. If they give you an event, Allah has no time, he doesn't wait and say, okay now go down. But means there is a tajalli all the time, every moment there's a tajalli for Allah so they're taking us to move away from your timed reality, move away from what you think your aql and your mind understand and now enter into the timeless reality in which the mind has no place, no place in that realm. Describe to me paradise, tables, 
rivers, grapes and fruit. In a world of light you're going to sit where? You're going to read what, what kind of grapes Allah are going to feed you in light. Huh? So it means it's, these, are, these are symbols to draw us because we're dunya people. So I said, I'm going to give you wine, rivers and all sorts of things, right? Come on, so come in because I'm about to test you. How do you tell you I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to be testing you, I'm going to be testing you, I'm going to be testing you and didn't describe all of these beautific things. Well, people would say, oh, okay, I'll, maybe I'll wait. So Allah is just drawing us. But you can't use the physical perception for these realities. So they teach you, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. That's why they are the people of the Zulfiqar. Zulfiqar is to take the head off. So they're teaching that when you're about to enter into this cave, because Ulul al Bab is which Bab? It's the door to the Divinely Presence they want to guide us into. Because they are the gatekeepers of the Ba that opens into Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, that opens into Surat Al Fatiha, that opens into all of Holy Qur'an. All of it is from a Ba. So these caretakers and, and gatekeepers of this reality they're teaching that this spider, go back to Qur'an that's the 29th surah. And your shaykh taught you the 29 in the huruf is Lam Alif and Lam Alif is the secret of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah And that reality was given to Imam Ali salam which is the Zulfiqar and that sword. And they hold the handle of that which is a hu. Because La ilaha illallah, hey wa mm, Muhammadun Rasulullah. They hold the who. So means they are the who men. People are trying to be human, but their 99% of them are shateen. They're no longer human in human form. They have the image of a human, but 90% at that time, Mawlana Shaykh described that 90% of Humanity lost their humanity and they're all possessed. And that's why we see what we see and how they do the evil that they do because humanity was an honour and a gift from Allah If you don't honour it and nourish it, you lose your humanity to shayateen and they overtake that body and that insan and they're inhuman. But the people of the gate and the caretakers of this gate, they are the who men in which Allah granted his hidayat and his hay, granted his wow and ishq and love and their guidance is all about Divine love and as a result they represent the who. That was what Mawlana Shah Naqshaban zikr of who on the pearls, on the lulu. One of his secrets of his reality that Allah had created him for is to guard these pearls and precious realities of insan. That Allah created them in perfection and make your zikr upon them from what I have given to you, make your zikr of who upon their reality. So then these who men are teaching us that you want to go in into this ankabut then live a life like the spider, that build the web for Allah that's what He loves. Build the web of your good actions, your good deeds, your prayers, your awrads, your zikrs, your etiquettes. Whatever the shaykhs are giving for your recitations on the app it's saying recite this seventy times, recite this seven times, recite this ten times. Recite this uh, 1500 times, recite this a thousand times, recite the Laila Khirat one juz every day, recite one juz Qur'an. If you can't hundred Surat Al-Ikhlas, do it. That's what Allah is interested in. Allah does not care for anyone's dunya. We're sent for a physical test 
to return back to a spiritual reality. Allah didn't send us here that you would have a wonderful dunya and that, oh I'm concerned now about everything of your dunya. Allah says, first take care of your akhirah. You have a two-way ticket back to paradise. Do the dhikrs and the awrads that I've inspired you to follow them. Do that as if you've made the beatific house of the spider. Not only it's an immense protection for yourself, for your energies, we didn't get into that. We just said to please Allah first that you do all of those practices to please Allah Later they'll teach you that everything you're reciting and every zikr you're reciting, Allah taking your soul on a journey based on that awrad, everything. That every, every verse of Qur'an that you're reciting because these are coming from the heart of Prophet That when you're reciting seven Surat Al-Fatiha, Prophet is dressing your soul from the tajalli of the Meccan Fatiha and the Medina Fatihas and all its realities and all its blessings. And every time you recite them the reality of Prophet is dressing that servant because, Samina wa atana. That you have given the command, you are the king of this universe and I am but your servant and slave. So when they have that they're being dressed because servanthood for Allah is an immense blessing. It's not like you have a servant on earth and you hurt them. Allah's servanthood is immense blessings. So when we listen and we recite we're being dressed by immense blessings that take away hardship, take away difficulty, take away every type of difficulty coming to us is what they're teaching, then be like this character that they do what they were inspired and given to recite, they do that first upon everything. Nothing else has any importance. If they do that then as if they built the spider web of their life. And every day they do it, every day they have the consistency to the best of their ability unless they're sick. They do that spider web and what Allah then promises for a spider is, I'm going to send you your rizq. Because these Naqshbandi is, this is, these are the core foundations of Naqshbandiya. That you do the awrah, do the rizq, do the prayers, do your jummah, do everything that you were ordered to do. This makes your soul beautific to Allah And as a result you're inside the cave because the awliya are warning us that if you forget the spider web and you enter into this cave life is going to be very difficult. With rizq collapsing and every type of hardship and sickness is all around, then go back to the principles of what you understood when you started. Is that there are awrads, the zikrs, the connections, all of those have to be done with a very solid and firm. Because when the spider web is not right, what happens? The flies go through, the rizq is passing. So I don't know why this passing, that going, this nothing happening. Well, because there's got to be a hole in the web. And that's why Allah gives this secret and gives this understanding. Otherwise why these details were taught? As to make your history interesting? But Allah must have immense realities on why Allah gave. You know when they make a movie the director plans everything. There's not even a random shot. When he's filming you even the time on the clock has an importance for the director. Whatever he's filming he's sending a message, everything, everything's exactly where he wants. If he has a can on the thing because he's selling a Coca-Cola, if he has a time on the clock maybe it says Rolex on it, everything is precise. You don't think for Allah that is a, is a game and Allah describes in Qur'an, you think this is for playing, I created this creation? Or everything has an immense message and reality. So one of these understandings is their teaching. 
that this rizq and this way of tariqah, the health, welfare and being of the individual is based on the practices they do. That was from the talk then last night and the night before, that determines your faith. Not the shaykh's station, not the shaykh's power or ability to make du'a, but are you doing what you are supposed to do that proved you had faith and that you had faith in the way and that you are accepting the way. As a result they give you a du'a, you read it, problems should be gone, difficulties should begin to go and diminish. If not, go back and build your faith, build your practices. Then you'll inevitably hear when it's not working, oh yeah you know as a matter of fact I kind of stopped that a while ago, I stopped this a while ago too. That's why now the ayat of course is not working, I stopped reciting it, I stopped reciting this. I didn't do my awrat, I didn't probably pray, I don't keep my wudu. All of these things are a sign of our faith and our practices. As a result of our faith becoming strong, our actions becoming strong, then this way becomes immensely miraculous because Allah opening and opening and opening. And as soon as they enter into the cave, only Allah are teaching that this is a, a nearness and a immense blessings to be near the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad because Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah is actually Siddiqiyah. It's the inheritance from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as And what he is going to offer us is that you'll inherit my position next to Sayyidina Muhammad As I was sitting in the cave, my nearness and love for Sayyidina Muhammad that his companionship with me and his comfort with me, that he put his head to rest on my lap is the nearness of the immensity of that love. Because someone you can love but you're a bit guarded from them. But what Allah is describing for them is, no Prophet had immense love for Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and felt the peace and tranquility. So then what your shaykh offers to you, if you love him, you'll inherit him. So the first shaykh is Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and it's called Siddiqiyah that come into this cave and, and have the characteristic of truthfulness with your actions and with your deeds. And that's why I said, if you ever find me when I became a Khalifa, if you ever find me leaving these principles of Islam, you have permission to leave me. And this is the, the character of a Siddiq, a Siddiq is the immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad the immense truthfulness and honour in the character. So what we get inside the cave with this love and this ashq is that you're going to inherit from me. I'm going to bring you with your good character to the nearness and to the qurb of Sayyidina Muhammad because you're now inside the Muhammadan heart in which Allah describes you in Surat Tawbah that why do you have to fear? Remember we talked about the faith? So what Allah describes in uh, Ajish Shahid, Surah Tawbah verse 40, because this is the month of Surah Tawbah, the nine. And this key from Surah Tawbah that awliya are going to go through Ayatul Kareem, they're going to now move through verse 40 because 40 is Muhammadan, 13, 1 and 3 is 40. So 13 and abjad is meme. Its value is 40. So this 9 verse 40 is a Muhammadan gate into the haqqaiqs that open up into the next 9 which is Surat Al-Kahf 18. A'udhu <laughs> Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Illa tansuruhu faqad nasal 
If you help not your leader, it is no matter for Allah. Did indeed help him when the unbelievers drove him out. He had no more than one companion. They too were in the cave, and he said to his companion, Have no fear, for Allah is with us. Then Allah sent down his peace upon him, and strengthened him with forces which you did not see, and humbled to the depths the word of the unbelievers. But the word of Allah is exalted to the heights, for Allah is exalted in might and wise. Means that this is the inheritance of a great Siddiq. As this dunya is coming after you and they want you because you are Muhammadiyun and the deen of the heavens that you follow, they are not happy with it. And if you take our way and come into this cave and follow this adab and this mannerism and this teaching, you're going to inherit from me. And if you inherit from me the nearness that you'll have with Sayyidina Muhammad Allah is telling us, what you have to fear? If this nearness that you have, don't fear Allah with us. And Allah to those whom achieve this love and this good manner and good character, every difficulty that comes to them, Allah give a sakinah in their heart, a peace. Where everyone else may think, that, eh, everything's on fire around that person. But Allah gives the grant and this is the inheritance of a great Siddiq, Siddiq al-Mutlaq. Siddiq that I'm telling you from this truth that Allah name me the truthful. If you come with this love, come with this path, come with this character, you'll inherit from me because I gave everything to Sayyidina Muhammad because this is our inheritance. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is a great, great grandfather of ours. We would not be on this path if you didn't have a relationship with him. You're not here from the cleverness of your being. But this is an inheritance of a great grandfather and a great, great Siddiq. And so when Allah asked me to give, I gave everything to Allah 
left his family with nothing. And when Prophet asked, what did you leave for them? For us because we're the family. He said, I left them, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah means I'm going to perfect your faith. If you come to me and you love our way and love my way, I will perfect your faith. That's my inheritance from Allah This is what I inherited based on my belief, the perfection of the reality of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah Why you have to fear Allah with us? And Allah began to send that servant sakinah and tranquility within their heart. And that's what they need in this world of difficulty that more and more difficulty, more and more difficulty, more and more panicking at every corner, every corner. And the great Siddiq is teaching us, come into the cave, follow the awrads that are being given, follow the path, follow the way. You'll inherit from this great Siddiq al-Mutlaq this love and proximity and qurb and nearness to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and as a result what? Allah guarantees for you, don't worry, I'm with you because Prophet loves you, the great Siddiq is supporting you. Allah says, don't worry, I'm with you. I'm come against all the unbelievers and I put a peace and sakina in your heart so that not to fear, not to be in panic. Not to, to be out of, uh, out of what's going in difficulty. We pray that Allah address us and bless us from the immensity of that reality. And within that cave there's a hole in which shaitan comes. And the hole within a heart that shaitan has a black spot, there's a black spot on everyone's heart that shaitan enters in to that black spot and begin to Try to flip the house of Allah and make it to be a satanic house instead of a divine house. And what, what the great Siddiq did to protect the heart, he put his qadam and he put his foot onto the hole so shaitan couldn't come out. And his protection for us is, follow my path, follow my way, you'll inherit from my Siddiq foot. That only my foot can block shaitan from coming into your heart. Do the awrads that the shaykhs are giving to you, follow the way that I've established. This is the Siddiq path and the way that the Siddiq al-Mutlaq left for us as an inheritance of those who love me and my children and my grandchildren that come follow this way. Allah will give us all this support, all this sakinah. And if you're following my turuq and my way, my qadam, my foot on your foot and I will put my foot into your heart to stop shaitan from entering. And then you are supported by the great Siddiqs and then you become a muqaddam, one whom is following their qadam and the footpath of noble saints, noble companions, noble Ahlul Bayt, all into the Muhammadan heart. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifu. Wa salaamun al mursaleen, wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa, wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.